Hello and welcome back to the Credit Academy. My name is Michael and on today's episode, we're going to be discussing in a little bit more detail why credit is important. Now, on last week's episode, episode one of the Credit Academy, which you can find up in that top right hand corner with that card, we discussed kind of what credit is at a very baseline level, but we did briefly cover why it is important, but we wanted to make a kind of dedicated episode once again, diving into more detail on that subject. So kind of just jumping right on into it. I mean, credit, just like a lot of other things when it comes to life, is a very slippery slope if you don't know how it works. You know, you can dig yourself a hole if you kind of jump on into it without too much knowledge. So we definitely recommend to kind of understand how the overall machine works. It may be confusing at first, but we promise as soon as you kind of wrap your head around all of the different kind of facets of credit, it begins to make a lot more sense. So just like any other type of tool set, credit once again can be misused. But that is why it is so, so important once again that you understand how it works. Understanding how it works is really the first step in maximizing and starting off on the right foot when it comes to your own credit journey. Also, if you're thinking or getting into kind of the business of credit repair, it's another important aspect before you begin that separate journey. So if used correctly, credit can be a very useful tool when it comes to, you know, achieving your financial goals in a much shorter amount of time. You know, like I kind of said previously, it allows you to really reach those goals like getting your first home, apartment, or car a lot earlier than you would if you didn't have credit, mainly because you're not going to have to put all of that cash down to buy it immediately. Instead, you can finance a loan or a mortgage. So kind of like I said previously, it's really useful for, you know, a lot of those larger purchases and other things include student loans, which a lot of people don't think about until they're ready to go off to school. Having a good credit score is a great thing to have when considering those student loans. You'll really get the lowest rate possible. And especially considering you're going to be paying those off for a significant amount of time. You really want to try to make sure you save as much money as possible by getting the lowest interest rate as possible. Katie, Ross, an educator and development manager for the American Consumer Credit Counseling Services said, and I quote, loans are a necessary part of life for many. So it's a very important aspect to really kind of consider it when it comes to your future finances. Credit is not only important for consumers, but it's also a very important part of the economy. Now think about it like this. Anytime a consumer or a business borrows from a lender, they are essentially putting that money back into stimulating the economy. Overall, kind of encouraging that economic growth, which is very, very good. For instance, if a company makes a product and it's in very high demand, but they don't exactly have the funds to meet that demand, then it kind of is a snowballing effect into debt for them. Now with credit, it allows them to really kind of borrow that money, set themselves up and meet that demand and slowly pay off that line of credit. So it's honestly a very useful tool for brand new businesses. And without it, it would be a lot harder to start a business in the current economic climate. Another instance of why credit is important is once again, kind of going back to that first home buyer scenario, you know, a lot of those first time home buyers aren't going to be able to afford their first home anywhere close to where they're able to get it now. You know, getting a home in your 20s used to be a unthinkable thing until credit came along and really kind of offered these, you know, payment plans for borrowing money and repaying it over a large portion of time. Without credit, it would probably take a lot of people an average of 50 years to get to the point where they feel comfortable putting down a large amount of cash for a property. So we talked a lot about why credit is important, but we haven't emphasized why good credit is important. Well, a lot of these things that I mentioned previously are only going to be attainable if you have average to good credit. So when it comes to bad credit, it can really impact the rate or the amount of money you can owe over a set amount of time. We've kind of already established how difficult it is to really go through this kind of current world without using any sort of line of credit or borrowing money for that rather. So if you have bad credit, it can make a lot of those situations worse. Overall, you can find yourself owing a lot more money when it comes to the same type of loan that say somebody else has 
maybe just a better credit score and you're going to be losing a lot more money over a set period of time when it comes to those higher interest rates you know the key when it comes to those interest rates is the better the score the lower the interest rate and the lower the interest rate the more money you're going to save especially once again over a longer set period of time it can also affect things such as down payments now we talked a little bit about you know having to get a mortgage to really get your first home but you will have to put down a set amount of cash and that is known as a down payment now now, having good credit can actually affect that amount of cash you initially have to put down. You'll, in a lot of cases, put down less money as your down payment if they believe you have a higher credit score, kind of judging your credit worthiness that way. Instead, if you have a worse credit score to get the same mortgage, you're going to have to put down a lot more cash up front for that down payment to show that you are committed to the mortgage itself. Remember how we mentioned credit can be a tool that can also be misused? Well, let's talk about some of the ramifications that comes from misusing said tool. Well, you will have a bad credit score. Now, a credit score is a judge of your credit worthiness, so having a bad one can kind of seem a little bit risky to a lot of those lenders. It, it can put you in situations where you're going to have to put more money down, kind of like what I previously stated with said mortgages, and also having higher APR rates. Another risk of credit, especially using it irresponsibly, is the added risk of debt or having to deal with fees as well. Now, those hidden fees are going to really kind of be a part of some of those lower risk kind of credit cards that are primarily aimed at those who have a lower end credit score. And when it comes to debt, it's very easy to snowball with said credit cards if you're not paying off the balances. Now, it's OK to let some balances revolve. That's kind of the whole, I guess, benefit of said credit card but you never want to go above, once again, that 30% utilization rate. So Katie Ross actually had something to say about this, and I quote, you should limit borrowing and take out loans only if you can easily repay them. It's important to distinguish between good debt and bad debt. Now, this is extremely important because good debt is a good characteristic of some loans. Anytime you take out a loan like a mortgage, you're technically in debt. You're borrowing that money but paying it off over a set amount of time. This helps bolster your credit portfolio and helps bolster your own credit score. Score. Bad debt, on the other hand, is kind of what I mentioned previously with, say, credit cards. If you let that revolving balance get to the point where you're not able to make the minimum payments each month, you can get into severe credit card debt. Now, this is a very, very slippery slope, so it's best to only really use your credit cards and only buy things with your cards that you can easily, once again, like Katie Ross said, pay off. So some other areas of importance when it comes to your credit score and how it's looked at is surprisingly job interviews. Now, job prospects won't exactly use your credit score all the time as a determining factor, really only whenever there is a significant amount of competition that is all qualified for the said job. Other areas include insurance rates as well, especially if you don't have history with said insurance company. They will oftentimes use your credit score to set initial rates. Housing applications are going to be another big kind of part that is going to be looking at your credit score. And a lot of people don't realize, in addition to this category, that apartments will also look at your credit score. This, once again, is to kind of judge your credit worthiness and see how... I guess predictable you'll be with your on-time payments. So the most important thing to kind of take away from today's episode is credit is a tool. You want to know before you begin using it, said tool all you can to understand the facets behind it because if you don't you can easily misuse it which can lead to some financial pitfalls. But if you do end up doing your research and if you can take away some of the tips I've discussed in this video, you can realize that it's a very effective tool in accomplishing your financial goals. So overall, the more you know, the better off you'll end up being. Now, that's about all we have for today's episode, so be sure to stay tuned for episode three, where we're going to be continuing on our discussion about credit. Now, thank you guys so much for tuning on in to today's episode of the Credit Academy. And we hope to see you guys in the next one.